Does trend line trading work? In this video, I'm gonna show you four different possible trades that all happened yesterday, including one that I took, and there's similarities and difference depending on your particular trading style. Now, obviously, guys, there's a ton of nuance when I say the trend line strategy. It takes a ton of screen time, experience, and also just intuition to know which are the good trades, which are the bad trades, which one are risky setups and things like that. And those are the things that I want to discuss because that's really what I needed to learn when I was figuring out how to day trade. I was always looking to cookie cut somebody else's model and use it as my own. And I didn't realize that it was just going to take time and experience to see certain dangers and certain great setups. Right now I'm trading four different assets or instruments. I've really just started with one. I figured it out and then I moved on to another. If I can give you some advice, find one thing that you want to trade. They all act differently. They all have different price values depending on ticks and points. And it really could be like a psychology game depending on the asset that you're trading. So really start to learn it. Learn their fake outs. Learn their movement patterns. Learn how many points they move in one day. That is really going to help your trading moving forward. So right now, guys, it is Saturday. The futures market is closed. And I want to say, I know there's going to be the hindsight police and say, yeah, everything works when you look back in time. But these were all real-time situations I was thinking about in the moment. And yes, it is easier to call it out and see it in hindsight. But really, the fundamentals and the reasoning behind the trades, those are going to be consistent moving forward. So please don't hindsight police me down in the comments section below. This is the ever so common NQ. It's really where a lot of people start, either the NQ or the ES. Frankly, I think it's safer to start on the ES. It just has a little bit more predictability and it doesn't have the big volatility swings that the NASDAQ has. I think you have to be a little bit better trader when trading the NASDAQ. And I've had my least amount of success trading the NASDAQ. But this actually is the trade that I took yesterday. So all these lines were on my chart. I did not delete them because I want to be able to talk about what I saw going into the day. So this is the four hour time frame. So every single candle is four hours. I've discussed in my previous video why I prefer the four hour. But we can see this was the 6 a.m. candle and pretty much we open right inside this little bit of wedge. I have a downward trend line here. It is solid because I make it solid when I have three solid touches. You'll see down here we have some dotted lines. That's when I only have two anchor points. And those, those trend lines really don't hold as much significance to me. I also draw fair value gaps on my chart and other areas of support and resistance here and there whenever I could. But we can see it was a chop zone. And I'm in a couple of discords and I'm listening to people trade the five minute time frame. If I, if I just click the time in a five minute time frame, which I don't even really look at, you can see the whole morning was just a chop fest up and down and up and down. And that is one of the benefits to trading the four hour. I don't see all of that noise that everybody else is seeing inside the five minute time frame. So essentially what we saw is we were waiting for a break and it came right up and touched this third anchor point in the middle of the, of the trading day. So that went from a uh, dotted line to a solid line in the middle of the day, came up here and touched and then came back down. And we were waiting for a flush below this. I am going to enter really as soon as we break the trend line. And my stop loss is always going to be placed above this trend line coming down. So I always use two trend lines with each other. I don't take stops according to percentages or dollar loss. I really just manage my risk and how many contracts I enter. That's how I really change my risk because I know where my stop loss is going to be. So I know how many contracts I can take to stay within my own risk parameters if it were to come up this case maybe like 20, 30 points and hit my stop loss. We entered right down here on the NQ about 20, it was pretty much like at 260, 20,260. And we can see right from jump, it came and pushed all the way down here to 2005 pretty much. And that would have been a great return right in itself, but I had to take profit down here around this fair value gap of 126. I'm gonna drop all of the 20s just to make our life easy. So it came all the way down here for a $400 play and then came all the way back up. When I enter a trade, guys, I close my computer and I walk away. I have my stop loss set and my take profit set. Too many times when I'm watching the chart, I move my stop loss and that is no good because it either hits my stop loss too early and then does what I want it to do. Just close your computer and walk away. But we can see for the whole entire rest of the day, 
it just started to pull, 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 and it ended up closing the day at 20,193. So that's about 67 points from where we would have entered. All right, so that's $1,300 roughly per contract. Now, this is one of the cons of trading Apex, which I'm doing. I'm passing another evaluation as well as my funded account. But with Apex, you need to close by the end of the day. So even though my take profit for my funded account is down here and this trade is still open as a swing trade, inside of Apex, I needed to close this trade. And I also need to have a trailing stop loss because of their trailing drawdown. If you go $5,000 into the profit with some of these trades and then it comes back $2,000, you can get stopped out and, and fail your evaluation. So it's been difficult trading Apex, but I'm starting to figure out how I can consistently use this model to pass those evaluations. So I ended up closing this trade at the end of the day, just like Apex wants me to, but inside the funded account where I'm copying into, I still have my take profit down here in this fair value gap around 124. Now I will mention guys, and this is going to happen as well. As soon as we pushed in, you could see it pull back, pull back all the way up here, about 20 points for $400 worth of drawdown. Um, I think it actually got to about $600 worth of drawdown. You have to be able to take drawdown. If you are nervous taking drawdown, your contract size and your risk is too high. I knew that I was going to allow this thing to come all the way back up here and come back out of this trend before I was going to get stopped out. I see so many people worried about drawdown. Drawdown is part of the game. It's very, very rarely you're going to be able to enter a trade and it is just going to continue to go in your favor the entire time. So yes, there was a little bit of drawdown, a little bit of heat, but it stayed within my parameters and look what it did the rest of the day. It is also worth noting as I swing trade this and as time goes on, right, this stop is going to move and follow this trend line. So although my initial risk was really, really high, we can see now it's pulled all the way back down here and my risk is really going to be about 323 as I wait for this take profit. So to summarize this trade, guys, we had a downward trend line on the four hour chart. I also had a fair value gap, which gave me a little bit more confidence to the downside acting as resistance. I had a fair value gap below that I knew that the chart most likely wanted to fill eventually. And then I had a break of a strong trend line with a fair risk, in my opinion, to see if this would, would continue to break down and target this fair value gap. If this fair value gap was not here, I would let this continue on until we broke this downtrend and that's when I would close this trade. So here's another place where the trend line broke, but I probably personally would not have entered this trade because of the amount of risk. It broke this kind of at the end of the day on a Friday and a lot can happen over the weekend. So that would have been the first real thing that wouldn't have been great for me, but we still have broke the three hour trend. I would expect this to probably continue downward a little, but as I mentioned, I use the downtrend line, the opposing trend line as my stop loss. So we can see this gap here from when I would have had to enter to my stop loss. That frankly would have just been too much risk for me to take on. And this is platinum and platinum does not trade micros. So I would not be able to de-risk myself by going into micros to take this huge amount of drawdown. So this is a uh, trade that I probably, to be honest, would not have taken, but would not be surprised if it continued down into this fair value gap down below. We can see this white line is also just another area of a ton of resistance that I saw. So that's just an area of interest for me. To be honest, to be happy with this trade, I'm really gonna wanna see this continue down. And I'm really gonna be watching to see if we come up and respect this trend line again. And I think the better trade here for me is a break of this downward trend line, but with that resistance, it's going to be probably push. I needed to push through there to really be confident in this trade. And that's where the nuance comes in. You can't just say I broke this trend line. It's going to go down and touch that fair value gap. We don't really know that. We can never predict the market. So this right here is not an A plus setup. And with where the chart is and what's going on, I'm probably going to be watching platinum and not taking a trade for a little bit because the next real trend line to break is way down here. Uh, or a push above this line. So we are kind of diddling in the middle here and I'm, I'm really not looking to touch this right now. But one of the things I really do like about Platinum for beginners and how I really learned is there's not a ton of movement. Every point is $50. So we can see that even if I entered somewhere around here, around 216, it ended the day at 214, right? So at a contract price of $50 per contract, that would have been about $100 worth of take profit right there, which isn't the best, but it doesn't suck either. 
And if I were to enter, we can see it would come all the way down here to pretty much 105-ish or even 106, we'll call it 106 to call it 10 points. So this down here would be about a $500 gain. But we'd have about a $500 gain for about a six, $700 loss. That's not a great R to R for me. So here's the ES guys. This is also a very, very popular asset to trade. And this is just one where there is so much going on. This would just be a very, very difficult thing for me to trade. Right now being at all time highs, right? We just recently hit all time highs. And without that opposing trend line, I really don't have that stop loss that I'm looking for. To be honest, now that we've broken down below this trend, I'll show you, I'll probably add one of these right here and I will start my next trend line. This would be a dotted line because it only has two anchors and that will just be something I look at. But right here where we had the break, right? I have two strong trend lines, one, two, three, four, five, six, pretty much six touches on that as well as a larger time frame that goes all the way back to... Uh, September 12th. So we have that trend line as well. So we did have a strong upward trend. We're at all time highs and we don't really have a tr downward trend line to act as resistance or our stop loss. It's This is just a, a little bit of a tough trade for me right now, especially with what the ES can do. It's affected by news. It's affected by the market. This is just it's a good setup, but it's a very, very hard trade. And this trade is where technicals and experience really are going to come into play. What I'm going to be watching for coming into this week is maybe this line, once again, acting as some sort of resistance. But I'm going to see, I'm going to need a nice bounce to the downside and be looking for maybe a target down here. It, 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 this one's really, really tough. I, I don't know if I'm good enough to trade this right now which is why the four hours great because I have no problems sitting on my hands. I do not always need to be in a trade. The last one was probably the best setup out of them on crude oil, but the one that would have been the biggest roller coaster and would have been tough, really, really tough to stay in if you were watching the charts. If you had your charts closed, this might have been a really, really easy trade right now. But so we have this upward trend line here that's acting very well. And we have one, two, three, four touches in a really, really short amount of time. I do like them spread out. This trend line started way back here with this anchor back here on the 10th of September. But the reason I like this trade so much is because we are coming to the end of a wedge, right? So to enter on this break right here, my stop loss, my risk isn't that bad, right? It's considering I'm taking the fair value gap take profit up here, this would have been a good trade. But oh my gosh. It enters right here, and then we can see it pushes all the way up to 68.64, pretty much where it closed. So right here on this first candle, you're looking at about $600 of profit for it to snap immediately right back. Now, I don't know many traders that could watch this thing go up to $600 in profit and then watch it really, really snap back and not get freaked out and not close the trade. I definitely would not have been looking at this, and we can see that if our stop loss was placed down here around the 67, it would have snapped all the way back, but then the next candle, it would have climbed right back. This would have been a real, real roller coaster. I would have had to take profit in here. This trade, I would have had to close on Apex, but in a funded account, this would still be open, but it probably wouldn't be a dick for a tick here, and it's close enough to my profit at the end of a Friday, where I think in all, realist all reality, I would have closed this trade and just taken it out. Now what's going to happen with this trade, we can kind of see I'm going to get rid of this line. This line is no longer valid. And I'm kind of going to watch and see what happens. We might have another downward trend that I can start. Uh, we'll use an anchor point here and I'll use another anchor point here. Only two touches, so that will stay dotted. So I really am not going to be looking for anything that's going to happen until we break out of this fair value gap above this trend line for possibly more longs. Or we're going to see if we can touch this and get some rejection out of this fair value gap and then for another break of the downside for another entry on crude. Hope this video was educational, guys. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you're trading and how it's going. I will leave you a video to watch next of why I stopped day trading options and actually moved over to futures. I hope you guys have a great weekend, and I'll see you in the next video.